I'm Kate Kelly with America Comes Alive, where you'll find great stories simply told. In the early 1900s, firemen rushed into burning buildings to fight fires, but they couldn't stay long. They were quickly overwhelmed by smoke. They had to remain outside until they recovered their breath again. This was a challenge that vexed black inventor Garrett Morgan. Morgan was one of 11 children born to parents freed from slavery. He left home when he was 14 and settled in Cleveland. He worked as a porter, a handyman, a custodian, and a sewing machine repairman until finally setting up his own shop. His main interest was inventions that made the world safer. How could he better prepare firemen to fight fires? In 1912, Morgan began work on a safety mask. In those days, there was no way to pump fresh air into a face mask. Since warm air rose, that meant the more breathable air in a smoky building was closer to the floor. Morgan thought that if he could use a breathing tube to pull the cleaner, lower air into the safety mask, a person might remain in the building longer to fight the fire. He then added a second tube to block exhaled air from going back into the lungs again. When he applied for his patent, he wrote, firemen could enter a house filled with thick, suffocating gases and smoke and would be able to breathe freely for some time. The patent was approved in 1914, and the mask began winning awards. He soon had orders from major cities like New York. Their fire unit used the masks almost immediately when the city faced a smoky subway fire. Then in Cleveland, Garrett Morgan's hometown, there was an explosion under Lake Erie where a tunnel was being built. Rescue teams couldn't get in because of the thick smoke. Four men in the first rescue party died shortly after descent. Messages were quickly sent to Garrett Morgan asking for the safety hoods. He and his brother Frank grabbed some of the hoods and ran to the side of the explosion where they descended into the tunnel. The first men they encountered were dead, but the Morgans pushed on and found a few of the rescue squad members still living. The Morgan brothers and several volunteers wearing masks made multiple trips to rescue workers one by one. White newspapers wrote about the story but refused to acknowledge Morgan's heroism. However, the local community came together and presented several awards to acknowledge Garrett Morgan's achievement. Ultimately, the gas mask was purchased by police departments and mining companies all over the country. The year before he died, Garrett Morgan donated several items, including the safety hood, to a collector. Today, it is now part of the collection owned by the Detroit Museum of African American History. I'm Kate Kelly with America Comes Alive. Look around and see what inspires you.